Great job. All right. We are happy to have you here. We're happy to be all together to celebrate what Jesus Christ has done. On Friday, we celebrated that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, not because of his own guilt, but because of ours. And today, we celebrate Jesus is alive and what that life means for us. And so as we get together, we get to sing and have some fun. Sing our call to worship comes from Psalm 16, starting in verse 9. Therefore, my heart is glad. My whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. That's the Hebrew word for hell. You will not abandon my soul to hell, just as he didn't with Jesus Christ. For everyone who believes, he will not abandon ours either. Or let your Holy One see corruption. He raised Jesus from the dead. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Let's rejoice with the Lord today. from 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verses 3 through 11. Uh, so if you want to follow along with me, that'd be great. You can read up on the screens, hop on your Bible or on your phone. Even if you don't have an app, you can just look up right in the Google, Safari, whatever you use. It's 1 Corinthians 15. It'll be there. You can find it. In Jesus' name. For I deliver to you as of first importance what all I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. That's the truth. We get to come before that same risen God um, and, and present requests and uh, share things we're thankful for and, and praise him in prayer. Um. Church, my church, 
upon this rock, this solid rock. Easter, singing God's praises, having a good time, and I'll tell you what, I, uh, I'm happy to hang out with you. I'm happy to be home. We had a great trip to Mexico, just let you know, we had a great trip to Mexico. I think, uh, I think we'll fill you in a little bit more next week as to what, what happened on our mission trip to Mexico and everything, so, uh, so hang on tight for Mexico news. We got a lot going on today, so let's, let's have some good, good time together. Let's hear from God's word about... What happened that first Easter morning? John 20, starting in verse 1, reading in Jesus' name, because it's God's word, not mine. John 20, verse 1, starts off, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. I love Mary and Mary, because if you look at all the Gospels, you'll see that uh, Mary was there, and then the other Mary, which I totally dig that she's called the other Mary. The other Mary is, in fact, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Um, but in a couple of the, of the Gospels, she's just merely called the other Mary, which I, I love the humility and just the, just the it's kind of like Henderson, actually. Um, we've got two police officers, Carl and the new guy. I don't know the new guy's name. He's just the other police officer. You got Mary, the other Mary, and then somebody named Salome. No idea. No idea who she is, but hey, she's there. And um, the, late, the ladies that were there at the cross, they saw Jesus crucified. They saw Jesus die on the cross for our sins. They heard Jesus say, it is finished. And then they saw him breathe his last. They saw his body taken down from the cross. They followed and saw him laid in a brand new tomb. They saw the stone rolled in front of that tomb. They saw it sealed with wax. They saw soldiers come to guard the tomb. I have no idea what their plan was early on Sunday morning. I know that they, they came prepared. They brought spices and everything. They're going to kind of like put a little bit more embalming on the body. That's the Jewish custom. They're going to put some more, you know, good smelling spices on Jesus because they didn't yet understand that he was going to rise from the dead. I just don't understand. I mean, I dig the spontaneity. Like, how are we going to roll the stone away? I don't know. Should we wake the guys? Nah, let the guys sleep. We don't want to bring them. They'll just get in the way. I get that. I get in the way. You know? But I don't understand the spontaneity. But there they go. They go, and, they're in a, and the stone had already been taken away from the tomb. And so she ran, went back to Simon Peter, the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, probably breathing deeply, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going to the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter. The other disciple is, in fact, John, who wrote this gospel. Now, he didn't say, I totally win. You know, he didn't say, I beat him, but, but he did. <laughs> He's like, that other guy, me, outran Peter because I'm faster. Peter, not to be outdone, 
both of them running together. The other disciple, I ran Peter, reached the tomb first, and stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came, huffing and puffing probably, following him, went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloths lying there, the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. And so you got, you, <coughs> so what you have is this order of events in which Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and Salome, they go in the morning, they see that the tomb is, you know, that the stone's been rolled away. If you follow all the gospels, they also met some angels. No wonder they were running away because they were afraid. They run back to Peter and John. They tell Peter and John, stones rolled, body's gone, don't know what happened. Peter and John run. John outruns Peter. Good job. Peter, though, being the bold dude that he is, is the first one to go inside. I'm betting that John said, I win, and then Peter said, no, no, I win because I went in first. You got to cross the finish line, buddy. You got to get all the way in before you can say that you won. It's kind of like, you know, like if you're racing for shotgun to the car. I don't know if your kids do this, like my kids did this. And so the rule is you got to be able to touch the car. So to be first. Peter and John run. Peter runs right in. There's the, there's the empty tomb. There's the linen cloths that they had wrapped around the dead body of Jesus. Then over to the side, folded up neatly, is the head cloth. Parents, this is a free one. This is a freebie for you. If your kids are ever complaining about making their bed, you tell them, if Jesus can fold up nicely the head cloth, after he died, before he rose, you know, right after he rose from the dead, if Jesus can do that, we can bank our beds. It's really bad exegesis and totally taken out of context. But it's a freebie. Jesus rises to new life, takes all the linen off of his body, folds that head covering nicely and puts it over to the side says hey i'm not going to need that anymore that's a called a death shroud it'd be like a like a hood that was placed over over the deceased body jesus doesn't need that anymore because he's alive peter looks and and it says in luke that he just marvels. He just walks around the empty tomb and he just marvels. And he walks home just marveling. Marveling is that like, that expression on your face of like, what just happened here? What? Marvel is that, wow, wow. But John, Verse 8 says, he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. That's one of the coolest things. John, he didn't even fully get it yet. He didn't even fully understand yet. But he believed that Jesus is alive. He walked out of that tomb. He walked back to, his, back to their homes believing that Jesus is alive, even though he didn't fully get it. And I totally understand that. There's so much about God that I believe that I don't totally get. Mary must have been running along with them. I don't know if she beat Peter or John. I would suggest that maybe she did, but she was... She was outside the tomb crying. She had already run all the way one way, run all the way back. And as 
Peter walks away marveling. Whoa, what just happened? As John walks away believing, believing Jesus is alive, Mary stays weeping. Verse 11, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look in the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had laid, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? I love angels. I really do. You see, we act like angels know everything. They don't. Angels aren't God. Angels are just another type of created being by God, right? They're just messengers of God. That's what they are. And so the angels are there as messengers. They're just sitting on the place where, where Jesus' body had been laying. They're just kind of like, hey, what's up? Why are you crying? I wonder if they looked at each other and be like, that's weird. They said to her, woman, why are you crying? And she said to them, they have taken away my Lord. I don't know where they have laid him. And having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing. But she didn't know that it was Jesus. I don't know what happened to Jesus' resurrected body. But it seems like everybody he comes into contact with doesn't recognize him. So something happened. And, and, you know, and, and so having said this, she turned around, saw Jesus standing. But she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, woman why are you weeping? Who are you, whom are you seeking or who are you looking for? And supposing him to be the gardener. Dude, what a, talk about a downgrade. Oh, I thought you were the gardener. Jesus has just suffered and died for all of our sins on the cross. He is Lord of heaven and earth, the son of God. But Mary thought he was the gardener. Disappointing. Sir, if you have carried, away, and carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, <coughs> Mary. And she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. She doesn't recognize who he is until he says her name. Mary, I love that he calls her by name. And then she she gives him an upgrade from Gardner to Rabboni. It must be what she's always called him because we can call him so, so much greater names today having been raised from the dead, having, having died for us on the cross. I mean, think of all of the things that we could call Jesus. She could have called him Messiah, risen Savior. She could have called him Lord of Lord and King of Kings. She could have called him the Son of God because only he could do it. But I think she was just used to calling him Rabboni because he is her teacher And Jesus said, don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I've seen the Lord, and that he said these things to her. The other other gospels mention that none of them, other than John, believed her. They all thought she was crazy and that she was making it up. You know, one goes so far as to say, well, you know women, they get a little emotional. And I'm like, oh, oh no, you didn't. That's, that is like a dangerous thing to say. Don't, don't do that. So we've got Easter happening and all of this stuff. And as we gather together and we celebrate, every Easter we get this opportunity. We get to go to the tomb early in the morning. We get to see that the stone's been rolled away. Jesus didn't need the stone rolled away. He didn't need the head cloth and folded that over there. The stone was rolled away by the angels so that people could see. 
that he's not there, that he's alive. We get to hear the, angel, the angels speak. What are you doing here? Why are you crying? I love it. It's kind of like angels are like the most obvious five-year-old. What are you doing? I'm crying. Like, you know, you could see like tears coming down her face. Why are you crying? It's kind of like it doesn't make any sense to be crying. Jesus is alive. Don't you get it? Every Easter, we get this chance to look into the tomb. Every Easter, we get this chance to run in with Peter and John and take a look around. Every Easter, we get to see the linen cloths over here. Every Easter, we get to see the head, the head covering folded over here. Every Easter. Every Easter, we get to walk out of the tomb. Marveling or believing? Marveling like... How'd that happen? Can someone really rise from the dead? Because if we don't believe, according to 1 Corinthians 15, if we don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead, then we're all out of luck. There's no rising from the If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, we can't rise from the dead. If Jesus doesn't rise to new life in heaven, then, then we're stuck. Every Easter, we get to walk out of that tomb marveling what happened or believing. Every Easter, maybe we get to hear the Savior say our name like he said Mary's name. Mary. Every Easter, we get to turn to the Lord's and Savior, and say, Rabboni, Savior, Messiah, Jesus Christ. And every Easter, we get to hear Jesus telling us who have believed to go and tell his brothers. Who is Jesus asking you to tell that he's alive? Who is Jesus asking you, just like he asked Mary, to go back, tell my brothers. I love that he calls the disciples my brothers. You know, go tell my brothers. You know, and, and, and he goes back, and she goes back, and she tells them, regardless of the fact that they think she, she's crazy. She tells them, and she believes that Jesus is alive. How about us? Are we marveling? What just happened? Are we believing, even though we don't totally understand? Are we believing and telling? Jesus is alive. Just going to take a little quick trip up to heaven, hang out with dad for a while. Don't worry, he'll be back. And that's the message of Easter. Would you pray with me? Lord God and Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for not, for not leaving Jesus in the tomb, for rising him to new life. I thank you, Lord God, that you, you rolled away the stone so that we could see, so that Mary could see and run and tell, so that Peter and John could see and marvel and believe. And we believe, Jesus, because they told person after person after person, and one person at a time, person by person, throughout history, the good news of Easter has been passed from person to person of those who have believed. Lord, it is my prayer today 
that every single person who hears this message today, who hears your word today, it's my prayer that they would believe. I pray, Lord God, that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you would help each and every one of us come face to face with the truth that you are the Savior, that you are alive. Whether we're marveling, believing, and if we are believing, I pray that you would give us the courage to not just believe, but also to tell. To tell someone that our Lord Jesus is alive. It's in your name we pray. Lord Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Friday, we celebrated Good Friday, the day that Jesus died on the cross, taking the sins of all of humanity on his shoulder, that through, by grace, through faith, and believing in him, not because of anything that we've done, because of what he's done for us, that we might be forgiven. Today, we, we stoop down and we look into the empty tomb, we walk away, marveling, Believing, believing and telling. So what's, what's the big deal? Well, if we don't believe that Jesus rise from the dead, then we're stuck. We have no hope. But by believing in Jesus, that he died for us and rose to new life for us, and that it's by grace through faith that we are saved, by believing in him, he gives us that same life, the hope of eternal life, and it's already yours if you're believing. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look right at you and give you his peace. Amen? We've got an Easter egg hunt to celebrate. We probably still have some you know, some pastries and stuff like that to celebrate. I hope you guys have a great day with your family. Keep believing. Amen? Go in peace. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he Bless you guys. Have a wonderful Easter Sunday.